Emotions was early recognised as an important part of behaviour in organisations. Then little by little we've come to realise how important emotions are right across the whole spectrum of, uh, of decision making. And, and surprisingly we know now uh, that emotions not only can get in the way of rational decision making, uh, you can't make rational decisions without access to emotions. People who don't have access to their emotions, the, um, the uh, Dr Spocks of this world, uh, you find them in, um, in institutions. You don't find them out there in uh, running uh, spaceships and in Star Trek, etc. Uh, if you don't have access to your emotions, you're incapable of uh, making uh, decisions uh, regardless of what your intellectual intelligence is. And so we, we have a much clearer idea now that uh, if, you don't, if you don't study the emotional dimensions, you really don't have an appreciation of how organisational behaviour uh, affects um, decision making and behaviour in work in general. That's why it's so popular now. Well, the person who popularised uh, emotional intelligence, his name was uh, Daniel Goleman. Uh, Dan was the um, uh, social sciences writer for the New York Times. He uh, decides to do a work on a new technique he's heard, he's heard about uh, for teaching uh, primary school in uh, the New Hampshire area where, where he lives. And when he goes there, he discovers that the new technique is called emotional intelligence. Uh, he gets to know the people who basically promulgating the idea, uh, Jack May and Peter Salaby. He becomes familiar with their work. And then based on that, he then writes uh, emotional intelligence, why EQ matters more than IQ. Uh, the book becomes a bestseller. Uh, appears on the, on the cover of Time magazine. You've certainly made it if you're on the cover of Time magazine. Uh, businesses can't get enough of it, uh, especially as, uh, as Goldman makes the claim in his book uh, that research has demonstrated that intellectual intelligence accounts for about 20% of your life successes. It must be uh, emotional intelligence that accounts for the other 80%. He makes a whole series of wild claims like that uh, through the book, uh, but through that sort of mechanism, uh, the idea absolutely takes off in business and uh, goes well beyond the scientific basis of, uh, of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is defined by, um, by Maya and Salovey as, as, as an ability, it's an intelligence, an ability uh, to recognise emotions, to incorporate the emotions in your thinking processes, uh, to understand what the emotions are about and ultimately to manage emotions in yourself. The idea of emotional intelligence is, uh, is perfectly valid. We've shown now quite conclusively through the research that's been done, the serious research that's been done on emotional intelligence, that it does make a difference. Um, uh, people who uh, lack emotional intelligence uh, constantly make, uh, make errors in dealing with people and even in their, uh, in their judgmental uh, decision making that can't be accounted for by the intellectual intelligence. So um, there's a lot of uh, misinformation out there and unfortunately people continue to buy it even today. Uh, the message that I make is that uh, emotional intelligence is valid but do take care that you're um, correct and using the scientific version not the, uh, the popular versions. We're learning a lot now from the uh, neurosciences. Um, we can look into brains that were uh, in ways that we just undreamt of uh, just a few years ago. So uh, functional magnetic resonance imaging, putting people in, uh, in uh, MRI machines and asking them to solve problems allows us to actually see what's going on inside their brains, which part of the emotions are, uh, are being triggered. For instance, there's a guy at, um, at uh, Harvard University, Joshua Green, who is studying ethical decision-making and showing that the parts of the brain that are activated for ethical decision-making are the same parts of the brain that are associated with our you know, basic emotions. So we're learning all of this uh, new information. Uh, there's uh, little hats that you can put on that are uh, electroencephalograph um, monitors. Uh, and a group of researchers has got people in meetings, groups of people in meetings, uh, literally looking into their brain while they're discussing and then synchronising what they're saying with their brain waves that they're recording and learning basically what their inner thoughts are while they're expressing their outer thoughts. And this is really, really um, revolutionising the study of, of emotions and already generating uh, insights that we, uh, that we had no idea about just uh, a few years ago. I still go into organisations, and my colleagues do, in our consulting roles. And uh, we have uh, senior managers telling us, um, 
You know, in our organisation, uh, we expect employees to, to leave their emotions at home. Uh, they can be as emotional as they like outside the office. When they come into the office, uh, we, don't, we don't do emotions in this place. Uh, it's really important. Uh, not only that, uh, I insist on it. You hear? I absolutely insist. No emotion. You get what I'm talking about? That's a little bit of a message in that one. Uh, look, the simple fact is that emotions are there. Uh, and, and people who are trying to be um, uh, unemotional get emotional about it. I've got a simple little uh, epithet that I tell my students. Uh, the most irrational thought a human being can have is to think that other humans are rational. We need to just convince managers and consultants that you can't really advise people uh, on the assumption that people are rational. It's just a recipe for disaster. If you try to uh, cancel out the emotion, emotional side, uh, you'll simply get incorrect decision making. Uh, if people are not uh, accessing their emotions, if people do access their emotions, but if they're told not to access their emotions and to make their, make their decisions in a, in a cold, calculated way, uh, it's going to lead them into bad decision making. Uh, the uh, Nobel uh, laureate um, uh, Daniel Kahneman wrote a book called Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow, where he talks about uh, in, in stock market decision making, uh, if you try to rely purely on uh, the, the, the rational computer generated decisions, uh, you will inevitably go down uh, the gurgler. Um, it's been demonstrated over and over again. Warren Buffett uh, states it um, in, in, in the same terms. Uh, he says you can't make uh, financial decisions. Uh, without understanding the, uh, the emotional underpinnings of that. And people who try to put the emotions on one side, uh, they're not going to be effective. So uh, one of the, the ways uh, from a practical perspective that managers can, uh, can approach this is by building uh, an emotionally healthy organisation. Uh, it's an idea that's been with us for, uh, for a while, but basically it's something that uh, goes across all levels of the organisation, uh, starts in the, in the C-suite, but goes right down to the, uh, to, to the work phase. Uh, one of the secrets of that, of that process, of course, is to uh, look at the, uh, the basics of emotional intelligence, uh, get people to understand that they can accept their emotions, uh, that they can recognise their emotions. What do emotions mean? And is it possible to manage emotions in yourself and in other people? Given the right circumstances, people can do that. But it first of all requires uh, really an acceptance and acknowledgement uh, that emotions are not to be swept under the carpet.